<laughs> is an Air Force veteran, a TEDx speaker, a master resilience implementer, international radio show host of Live Transformation Radio, business positioning strategist, and author. He believes that you were created for a purpose, and when you unlock that purpose, you will elevate your life. So make some noise, and please welcome to the stage, Sean Douglas! How's everybody doing? Outstanding! I love to see your faces right now. Everybody's early in the morning, got their coffee, everybody's feeling great. If you're feeling great, say, oh yeah? Oh yeah. Outstanding. So I got a question for you. My first question is, who right now in their current business has been operating it less than five years? Raise your hand. Less than five years. A couple, a couple, outstanding, put them down. By a show of hands, who's been longer than 10 years? You've been operating your current business longer than 10 years. Perfect, outstanding. Who's not gonna raise their hand no matter what I say? <laughs> Couple people, outstanding. Very, very cool. My message for you today is that either you position yourself inside of your marketplace or the marketplace will position you. The problem that I see a lot of is that we come out with an, an amazing company, we come out with an amazing product or service or program that we're going to sell to somebody, but we haven't conditioned the market to receive that specific problem or that specific program, product or service because they don't know exactly what you offer. And by positioning, I mean they know exactly why they're going to come to you because you've already conditioned by marketing, either content, influencer, whoever marketing you want to use, they've already pre-programmed why they're gonna go ahead and do business with you. So what we see a lot of is, I got these Facebookpreneurs, everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? The Facebookpreneurs that message you like weirdly, like, hey, buy my program. You're like, I don't even know who you are. It's becoming more rampant. We don't buy from them because one, we don't know them, like them, or trust them. And the second thing is, I don't even know what you do. And most of the things that happen at a networking event is, so what do you do? And so like the first question, right, at a networking event, so what do you do? You can do that simply by positioning yourself, and I'm gonna deliver some high value content that's gonna tell you exactly how to position yourself inside of your market category. Is that okay with you? <laughs> Outstanding. We're gonna ask three questions, and so if you have a piece of paper, something to take notes with, we're gonna ask three questions. And at the end, I'm going to do offer you a better than money back guarantee. Anybody want a better than money back guarantee? Sure. I'm going to offer you a better than money back guarantee. So if that's okay with you, say oh yeah? oh yeah? Outstanding. The first question that I want you to ask yourself is what am I willing to do more of than anybody else? What am I willing to do more of than anybody else? Am I willing to deliver more content? Am I willing to deliver world-class customer service? Am I willing to go above and beyond? Am I willing to drive an hour in the same state that I'm in? Am I willing to drive an hour just to meet with a client? Or do I make them come to me? When I'm on social media, am I absolutely helping every single person I can by answering their questions and delivering the best amount of content that I can? I will tell you that starting this year, I've been more profitable, I have been more positioned because I've given everything I have away for free. Literally. I've given everything away for free. Somebody was on social media asking, hey, I really want to launch a book. How do I do that? And I have an entire document that I use to position people's books to be the bestseller and be congruent with their business. I copied and pasted it into a social media post. Hey guys, if you want an awesome book marketing strategy, here's how I do it. Four people messaged me hey man, I want to work with you, but you have it for free. I just, I want to work with you. I'm like, awesome, let's do it. When you give everything away for free and hold nothing back, now you're positioning yourself as the go-to subject matter expert with credibility and authority. A lot of times what we see is I don't want to give everything away for free because then I have nothing to sell. You probably heard this before. If I give everything away for free, I have nothing to sell. Not true. When you give everything you have, People see what you have to give and they say, well, if they know this much, 
How much more can they give? How much more can I get if I actually pay them? And so what I've noticed is that if somebody wants to start a podcast, anybody here have a, have a radio show or a podcast? One person, outstanding. Does anybody want to start a radio show or a podcast? Nobody. <laughs> Her in the back. I will tell you right now that if you do not have a podcast or a radio show or are not being a guest on at least 50 shows a year, you're failing, period. 10 years ago, 17% of people actually listen to podcasts. 17%, about 10 years ago. Now, 29% of people listen to podcasts every day. 10 years ago, it was 17% listened to at least one episode. And there was only about 200,000 podcasts. Now there's over 700,000 podcasts. And it's a $314 million marketing budget, like market inside of podcasting. Sponsorships, I mean, the monetization that is possible inside of this industry is remarkable. Who here watches TV and fast forwards through their commercials? Pretty much everybody. Who here doesn't even watch TV? Outstanding. If you are getting content from social media or from podcasting, there's an opportunity for you to market your business inside of the radio show. I have sponsors on my show all the time. I market my friend's business all the time for free because this is where everybody's listening to content. This is where everybody's getting it. So I suggest that everybody either starts a podcast or be a guest on 50 Podcasts. Has anybody been a guest on podcasts before? A couple? Here's, here's a great way to do it. Go to podcastguests.com. Podcastguests.com. My buddy Andrew will send you an email every Monday with six podcasts looking for guests for free to your email. That's, a, that's an amazing lead generation strategy that takes zero effort. He literally emails you every Monday six shows and then you apply to be on those shows. So when you're on the show, how you can position yourself is one, have a lead magnet. Everybody has a lead magnet, right? So what am I willing to do more of than anybody else? When I'm on a podcast, I say, hey, download this or go to my website or here's a free call, but I'm giving most of the value through the podcast episode or through the marketing of that show, which then I say, oh, by the way, here's my little download, here's my lead magnet, here's my whatever. Some people don't. And how do you leverage that show and leverage each and every opportunity, like for the speakers who are speaking here, how are you gonna leverage this moment? And so what are you willing to do more of? Answer that question. What are you willing to do more of than anybody else inside of your space? Second question. Second question, what am I willing to do differently? What am I willing to do differently? The best companies in the world don't do anything better. They do it differently. When you think of a company that stands out like Amazon or Apple or any of the car, car manufacturers, anybody's business, they do it differently. So my, she, she mentioned that I have a radio show, Life Transformation Radio. It is a live online radio show that's repurposed into a podcast. It is not just a podcast, you have to go to Apple. You can literally listen to it driving home. You can literally listen to it as we're recording live. Therefore, I don't edit a thing. Whatever happens on the show, happens on the show. My dog's literally gotten a fight behind me on the show. I'm like, well folks, my dogs are gonna kill each other in a second, uh, I'll be right back. For a second. Hey, uh, answer this question real quick. And so she's answering the question, I'm trying to rip my dogs apart. Live on the show. Got back in, like, you're all right. I'm like, yeah, we're fine. Let's go. One of my highest rated episodes. <laughs> Maybe that's why reality TV is so good. When you can answer this question right here, what am I willing to do differently? This gives you the pathway forward. Because if everybody's doing the same thing, then there's no way for you to stand out. If you're copying the business model that's already set in place, it's successful because everybody's done it. However, you're lost in the mix. 
There's no way to set yourself above everybody else. So I ask you right now, what are you willing to do differently? If I came off the stage and I started talking to you guys and I came over here and I just stopped my presentation and I only talked to you, you would have a very different experience than everybody else in the audience. You'd be taking really great notes. Sean, that was brilliant. Thank you so much. So if I only stopped my presentation and talked to you, you'd be having a very different experience than everybody else who decided to sit in the front row or sit in the back. Right? Does it make you nervous? <laughs> <laughs> so I ask you, what are you willing to do differently? Can anybody answer that right now? What am I willing to do di differently? Or do you know how you are different? Can anybody answer that? You can? What's your name? Elisa. Elisa. Everybody say hi, Elisa. Hi, Elisa. How are you different or what makes you different? Uh, in the business world, everybody thinks to ask you corporate and I'm just like, let's just have fun and love everybody. So it's all about fun, being you, being grungy, being classy, whatever that is that you want. doesn't have to be corporate. So it's like living your brand, being truthful to yourself. Outstanding. I want to give her some love for sharing, but wait. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to clap once, snap once, and point at her and say, you rock. Clap once, snap once, point, and say, you rock. Ready? One, two, three. You rock. See the joy on her face? When you give your energy to somebody else, doesn't it make you feel good? Yeah. Positive energy? When you receive that positive energy, does that make you feel good? It's amazing what we can do when we are different. I do this exercise all the time at events that I go to. And it makes people smile, it makes me smile. Because when we give positivity and gratitude, and you receive that positivity and gratitude, it just makes you feel a certain type of way. Instantly, instantly can change your whole focus. I was speaking at a conference in California, and I was a closing keynote speaker, a couple people come up to me and said, man, that was amazing, let's talk over dinner. I'm like, cool, gotta catch a plane anyways. So we go to dinner, and as we come in, I can see there's a lot going on. It's a very busy restaurant. So the host is like, oh, I'll be right with you. He's running all over the place, come back, seating people. It's chaos. Dinner rush, you know what I'm talking about. They come back, they seat us, and the waiter comes up to us, okay, what can I get you? I'm like, wow, dude, you are like on a million miles an hour. Let's calm down, tell me what you're grateful for. No, 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 I got, tell me what you're grateful for. Stopped, you seen him calm down a little bit. Well, I'm grateful for the job, I'm grateful for this moment. I got a great wife. Um, Today's a great day. And then you've seen him slow down. And you've seen him start to not panic. The chaos is going around, but he doesn't hear it, doesn't see it. And he's super calm. I can see him interacting with the people who he was rushing. Do you need anything else? Anything? Now he's like, what can I get you? And he's super calm. So I have my phone out. My friends got their phone out. We're doing the Facebook Live influencer thing. We're pumping up, tagging the restaurant, letting them know that we're here on Instagram, right? Getting everybody pumped up around us, high-fiving people. Just then, I don't want to look, but just then, there's a group. I swear there's like a Titanic reunion going on. <laughs> Average age was like 95. And I'm really trying not to look, but I couldn't help that the gentleman stood up, had a cane, black square glasses, camouflage hat, and he walks over to me with the cane. He's like, hey, are you the spokesman for this restaurant? <laughs> uh, no, sir, I'm, I'm just an inspirational speaker. I just got done speaking at a conference. I literally still had my badge on my shirt. Oh, well, I'm not inspired and walks away. <laughs> I know that he was doing that on purpose because he high-fived the people that he was with. I literally got bullied by a 95-year-old man. <laughs> Just then, the manager comes over and he's like, screw those people. You inspired us and comped our whole entire meal. Just because we were willing to do more, we were on Instagram, we were on social media, we were tagging the restaurant, we were doing Facebook Lives, we were in our, in our section talking to other people, just having a lot of fun. And then because I did that one thing, that one time with that waiter, the manager took notice. You never know what you're gonna say or do that will change someone's life. 
You never know the one thing you might say to somebody that reframes their mind, which then reframes their life. So I ask you, what are you willing to do differently than everybody else? It's not about doing things better. It's about doing things differently. And when you position yourself in the marketplace differently, then you stand out. And here's how. You have to create a problem that only you can solve. We never knew that standing in the street, waving our hand for a taxi was stupid. But we did it all the time. Until somebody reframed the problem of we have to get from point A to point B, don't really want to take a taxi, how about an on-demand car just comes and picks you up? And now what do we do? We just Uber everywhere, like it's nothing. The things that we did five, 10 years ago was like, well, that's dumb. Now, everyday practice. 10 years ago, talking about meditation and mindfulness and resilience and gratitude was woo-woo and nobody liked it. Now, who has a morning routine every morning that you do? You know what I'm saying? 10 years ago, you'd have made fun of a morning routine, whatever, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> now, we talk about mindfulness and meditation and emotional intelligence, what they weren't talking about 10 years ago. Things are different. So I ask you, how do you position yourself? Create a problem that only you can solve. Frame that problem in a way that conditions the market to receive that problem. Once you condition the market to receive that problem, you then only market the problem, not the solution. If you always talk about buy my stuff, buy my stuff, because you see it all the time on LinkedIn and social media and all that, right? Especially email lists. I get emails every day from the same group and I literally dissect all of their emails. Most of the people that I'm on their email list, I don't care what they sell, I just wanna dissect their process. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a cool lead magnet, let's see. Oh, this email got sent at this time, about 10 minutes, cool. And I literally dissect people's processes and then I unsubscribe from the email list because I wanna see what people are doing. And then I get better at what I'm doing. I want to see the problem. And then I want to see how you market the problem. Because most people say, buy my stuff, but I, I don't even know what you're solving. And so create a problem that only you can solve. I notice that podcasts, books, your programs, products, and services are sometimes not congruent with your business model or have nothing to do with what you offer. So I know people who have a podcast and it's about business, but yet their business is become a great husband or wife, like relationships. And their show has nothing to do with relationships. So why if you have a relationship business talking about marriage, do you not have a marriage podcast? They have a business podcast, which doesn't make any sense to me. So a lot of times your programs, products, and services that you come out with have nothing to do with your business. You think it's something great that you want to offer somebody, which isn't wrong, but it's not in congruence with what you are actually doing inside your business. So if you don't position yourself correctly and condition the market to receive you and your problem, the market will position you. And when the market does that and it's wrong, it's so hard to come back. It's so hard to come back. Once the market positions you, you're done. So how to position yourself is create a problem that only you can solve. Then frame that problem so that the marketplace receives that problem as holy crap. I do have that problem. For example, my friend has a budgeting app. He was like, hey man, I have this amazing budgeting app. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's going to save you money. You should buy it. I'm like, dude, I don't need another budgeting app. I already have two. I don't need another budgeting app. So we sat there and had an hour conversation. Here's what came out of that hour conversation. Hey, I have an amazing budgeting app that keeps you accountable and will only let you spend a certain amount of money because you can link it to your card. You can only spend a certain amount of money a day, which then saves you money because you're not overspending. Huh. I do have an overspending problem. Dude, now you're onto something, right? Instead of saying, I, I'm this, you didn't frame out a problem that you're solving. You just said, buy my stuff. So how are you different? Condition the marketplace to receive your unique problem 
and then market the problem, not the solution. The third and final question that I want you to ask, and I believe it is the most important that you could ever ask yourself, how will I connect? How will I connect?